Yes, I understand. It's not popping. The colors have been picked carefully already, but then I'll try to make adjustments. Soon, that payment has to come in first. But that was six weeks ago. You saw something online. Okay. You want me to make three more logos? <laughs> so, this time around, I'm going to take a look at client and designer roles on branding projects to avoid stuff like what you just saw. So, stay tuned. Alright, so first is first, compensation. That's one thing you always need to get out of the way, if not, you have issues. <laughs> I'm talking from experience. So, you, you want to talk about money first. I know it can be hard you know, to talk about money. It's easier to talk about how excited you are to work on a project than talk about money. Talk about how you're going to get compensated for the work being done. So, it's best to have that you know, sorted out first before starting out. So, the best compensation plan you know, recommended by Chris Doe himself is 50, 25, 25. So 50 upfront payment before the start of the project, 25% halfway in, and then 25% at the end of the project. So that's what you usually want to do. And then second thing is extract a very, very detailed brief. And you do that by asking as many questions as possible. You know, you can do this by um, having a client fill a questionnaire or having a sit down with the client. But obviously you have to go with your prepared questions. So like I said, you want to ask as many questions as possible. Try to understand the brand you know, down to every detail. Understand what the client wants. Understand you know, their dreams and what they you know, aspire for. What they, what they aspire to desire. <laughs> what they're basically, you just want to know what the client is thinking. All right, next thing you want to do is show your client how you're going exactly, how you're going about the project. So, you know, we're talking about timeline, different stages, you know, where exactly we're doing in those stages, you know, you want the client to know. And then you also want to ask for client feedback at every one of those stages. <laughs> so you don't get to stage five and the client says, no, I want this done this way. No, 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 no. And they have to go back to stage one. And, you know, basically to avoid back and forth and, you know, having to do a project all over and over and over again. Save yourself some stress and let them know how you're going about it and then ask for feedback at every point in time. Lastly, you want to end on a good note with your client. So, when ending a project, make sure you are parting ways with the client on good terms. So, you know, to avoid drama and so you can actually have returning clients. Returning clients are very good, actually. <laughs> so, you know, make sure you're just part of good terms. What you also want to do is to share your work or your work on the projects as a case study, you know, to attract more clients and to just let people know that you're doing good stuff. All right, so talking about client goals, um, what you want to do as a client is to try to be as clear as possible with your ideas. You know, that can be hard. That's why I mentioned for the designer that you should ask as many questions as possible. So as a client, just try to express what you exactly have in your mind. You saw something or you've been thinking about something or this is what actually informed the idea. This is what started the business. You know, just say this, you know, say whatever you have in mind, no matter how you know, silly you might think it is. Just let the client, you, know, you never know what will actually you know, um, be that um, light bulb moment for the designer. So just try to be as clear as possible with your ideas. And then try to be present at every stage of the, or the stages outlined by the designer, so as to avoid you know, back and forth. Because if you, if you come at stage six and you know, if you start at stage one, you know, you're present at stage, you're present at stage one, and then you come back at stage six and you're like, whoa, what's all this? Or, you, know, you, you, know, you, you don't like what's being, being done. You know, you have to take the designer by, you know, five stages back. But you, if you follow through on every stage, you can't say, oh no, I like this, you know, I like that. Or this isn't going according to plan. Or this looks great. You know, to avoid back and forth, uh, you know, um, when creating a situation. And then a very, very important thing is compensation, timely compensation. You know, from my experience, most clients work, want their work delivered in the quickest time possible. But, mostly make payments ages after you know you know that can be very um, annoying sometimes moralizing for designers or creative directors or project managers and i think the best way to you know incentivize you know people you work with is to make sure compensation comes in timely or in time 
you know, so I think that's a very major issue, you know, clients, you know, designers usually have clients, you know, looking for payments, you know, six weeks after, stuff like that. So, you've come to the end of this video, I hope it was helpful, I hope you can have a seamless relationship with your clients now, you know, I hope you know, things become easier and you know, the process becomes easier for you, I hope it was insightful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on the notification bell, um, share, like, comment and see you soon.